I'm gonna just let y'all know right now. It's gross. <laughs> oh, dog. Oh, dog. Oh, dog. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Yami Rodriguez and uh, I had a baby. <laughs> if you don't follow me on Instagram, then you might not know that I gave birth um, three weeks ahead of schedule on January 26th. My beautiful baby boy was born. He's actually right there. He's napping. And boy was it an experience i did intend to vlog it and that's why i have um bits and pieces of footage here and there but it was an intense experience to say the least so i figured why not share it with the world <laughs> uh, let's backtrack to two days before i gave birth uh, which was a Friday. I was off from work and I went to my OB appointment, business as usual, um, in which she told me that I was already three centimeters dilated. I had no idea. I didn't feel dilation up until that point. I had been working, whatever. So, and I was concerned. I was like, well, can I go back to work? And she said, yeah go back to work it's fine a lot of women get to three centimeters and then they kind of pause um, my due date was February 14th it was Valentine's Day my, my due date was Valentine's Day so I knew I was already dieted uh, I knew I was already dilated that Friday um, but like I said my doctor didn't seem too concerned with it so I wasn't too concerned with it and I went to work on Saturday and I was having a little bit of discomfort nothing major I had been having horrible Braxton Hicks pretty much from like the middle of my second trimester up until I gave birth. It was, it was awful. Uh, before I <laughs> went back for dinner time for the residence, I went to the bathroom and I noticed that there was some spotting um, and I freaked out. I was so, so scared um, because that hadn't happened, you know, in my pregnancy at all. Mind you, the day before my OB did check my cervix and um, she did tell me that I might experience some spotting um, and to not worry, but I just didn't feel right. I had been having the Braxton Hicks on and off pretty much all day, nothing consistent. Um, so I called the on-call number and they basically told me, why don't you go ahead and come on in We'll check you out. It's probably nothing. When I got to the hospital, honestly, I was under the impression that I was just gonna get checked out. They were probably gonna give me something to stop the labor pain and maybe put me on bed rest and send me on my way. That's not what happened at all. And when they checked my cervix at the hospital in triage, I was actually four centimeters instead of three. So labor was happening. Right off bat, I told them that um, I didn't want an epidural. I didn't want any pain management whatsoever. I, nothing. Like I wanted fluids and I wanted them to leave me alone. <laughs> um, and boy was that decision quickly in question as my labor progressed. I mean, there were so many, so, so many times I called the nurse up in there throughout the night to ask if there was anything other than an epidural that could help me with my pain. Every single time she said, there's really nothing else we can give you that'll help you feel better other than the epidural. For me, it was more of like, I, I, I want to do this. I want to be able to I want to feel everything and I want it to be drug free and I don't want an epidural I don't want this huge needle in my back no like no there was I was really it's not that I'm something it's not that I have something against it or it's against like my religion or anything I just didn't want it because I wanted to feel it I wanted to you know have it be as natural as possible um so i stuck to my guns but boy was that hard you know how people tell you that like a contraction is kind of like a period cramp 
That's bullshit. It's such utter bullshit. There was legit no other pain that I had ever felt in my 26 years of life that I could have compared it to the pain of labor. Nothing. And I know some guys are like, well, getting hurt in the balls, you know, and if you get kicked in the balls, it kind of hurts. Listen, I don't got balls, okay? But shit was not fun. It was tough. Nobody got a lot of sleep in that room that night, especially me, um, because I would try to fall asleep, but then a contraction would come and fuck my whole shit up. At one point throughout the night, at one point of the night, they did give me something to kind of like calm me down, which is understandable because I was very anxious. And I was in a lot of pain and I could not relax. Um, and every time they checked me to see if I was dilated, um, I was dilated a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, but not enough to break my water. So if you're wondering, what does a contraction feel like, bruh? It's so bad. It's, it literally feels like your insides are being crushed and squeezed and I get I get now why people kind of compare contractions to period cramps because I mean you are cramping but it is so much more intense than that so much more like toe curling pain so bad they checked me and I was fully dilated um at that point the doctor finally came in and decided to break my water. Now, let me tell y'all about this situation because it was intense. So he basically came in with like this long chopstick looking thing. And I was like, where the fuck are you gonna stick that at? And he was like, okay, well, you know, you're fully dilated. So we're gonna break your water. So he sticks the, the, the long chopstick looking thing all up in there and bruh so much water like so much i remember looking to the side and it was alex and my sister sitting and i could see i couldn't see down like to where everything was happening but i could see their faces and they were for lack of a better word horrified they looked horrified at how much water came out and it felt very, very warm, but it didn't hurt. It was uncomfortable, the the, the insertion of whatever the fuck the tool is called, but um, it wasn't painful, like the actual water flowing out. It was just so much. So after that, about 30 or 40 minutes go by and I'm like, okay, I need, I, I feel like I need to push. So we did a couple practice pushes with my mom there. So my mom was here and then it was Alex and then it was my sister. And um, it was Sunday the 26th. Um, I pushed for about 45 minutes or so. Um, it, felt, it felt like it went by really, really fast. Pushing sucked. Pushing sucked. There was no, there's no. And I remember at one point I screamed I, 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 I screamed a lot. Um, there was one point that I screamed, he's not gonna fit, he's not gonna fit. Um, the reason why is because the inside of my thighs and my, pel my, my whole pelvic area felt like it, it was being stretched out to the max. Like the bones felt like they were being pulled to the max. And I, w I remember saying, He's not gonna fit. He's not gonna fit. And everybody was like, no, don't say that. You're doing great. I'm like, no, I'm telling you, he's not gonna fit. This is where I learned just how much your body can take when you're delivering. Cause boy, was that something. So I pushed a few, a few times really. It, it was, the pushing was, by far 
the most painful, more painful than the labor, more painful than the contractions. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> uh, and it, it was so frustrating because I kept pushing and it felt like he was almost there, but then the contraction would stop and then I would kind of like relax a little bit. And then, so like people kept, like my mom and my sister were like, he's here, he's here. And that when I would stop pushing, no, he's not here. Because, you know, when you stop pushing, the baby kind of comes back in. Um, so around eight o'clock in the morning or so was really when everybody and their mom came into my room. There were so many nurses the doctor, everybody. And, um, and it was, I mean, it was, it was basically showtime at that point. Um, and, and there was a girl there, there was no going back at this point. It was just like, you, you're, you're having this, you know, he's coming, he's coming. <laughs> so they ended up did having to, um, perform what's called an episiotomy, um, because I knew they didn't know, but I knew he wasn't gonna fit through there. It was just too much, okay? So I pushed and I pushed and I pushed. And after one good time, that was it. He was here. I remember looking down and it was kind of like, <laughs> it's hard to explain. Um, and I saw him and it, it was unlike anything I've ever seen. He came out, he had so much hair everywhere. And um, I immediately know that I wanted to do skin to skin um, before anything. Um, Alex cut the umbilical cord after a while um, and they put him immediately, they put him right on my chest. And he. I remember the doctor vaguely like stitching me up down down there um but i don't i don't remember the pain at that point because he was here he i had him he was he was here and it is it was just so surreal 13 and a half hours are you okay I know it sounds so cliche and everybody always talks about how it's life changing and it's magical, but like, I have to agree. You're there right, buddy. Yeah. I, I was so in love. I, I feel so in love currently. <laughs> um, and yes, it was painful, and I'm not gonna lie, I don't wanna do that again, as of right now, ever, because it was so painful. <laughs> but he, he was worth it. What's wrong? Ooh, big yawn. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, being a baby's exhausting, ain't it? If you like this video, please, please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, still give it a thumbs up. Cause I mean, look at how cute we are. Look at how cute we are. <laughs> I hope you're having an awesome day and an awesome rest of the week, wherever you are. And I will talk to you guys in the next one. Remember to subscribe and always, always be kind. Mwah. Want to blow kisses? Mwah. <laughs> Bye.